Just tell me what you ready. Yeah, let's go inside. All right. My name is Barclay Hendricks, and I'm an artist. As I say, everything that you sort of see is uh, uh, piles of ideas. Uh, it could conceivably look like junk, but you know, it's piles of uh, inspiration and uh, ideas and lucky finds. When I first got your email, um, it was a wonderful surprise because sometimes uh, you don't know what happens to your works. And the, uh, the wonderful uh, correspondence telling me that you had grown up with this piece, I came back and told my wife and uh, it was a, a wonderful, <clears throat> delightful experience that I had reconnected with someone who uh, uh, very warmly conveyed that this piece was a part of their life and uh, uh, the particular painting in question, uh, the title, as I say, was called Two and it was a, a circular uh, piece uh, that was uh, straight oil on, on canvas. The motif at the time was uh, my involvement with basketball as a subject matter. And at the time, I was working with the uh, Philadelphia Department of Recreation. And when I would uh, sit at the front desk, I would uh, do sketches uh, of uh, the basketball backboard and uh, the, the hoop. During a particular time of day, uh, if a ball went up, uh, the shadow on the backboard would uh, would be uh, something that would catch my eye. That aspect of uh, illusion between the ball hovering before the backboard and the shadow that it would cast uh, before it uh, uh, went through the hoop. And the title was uh, a situation that would happen when guys would be playing ball and they would throw up a shot and they, they knew that it was gonna go through. And they would scream out two before the ball <laughs> got anywhere near the net, or when I say net, get anywhere near the iron. And uh, needless to say, sometimes, or a lot of times, the ball wouldn't even go anywhere near going through the hole. But uh, <clears throat> there was that area of, of confidence in terms of uh, when uh, the score in the shot before it went up uh, was a part of the game. And uh, so to me, it was only natural to uh, do a piece that uh, represented uh, a ball that was going to surely drop through the hole. I call myself an Amer African. I'm an American of African ancestry. Say my root system is here, and I have uh, uh, Native American as well as Anglo-Saxon blood in me. So I'm as much of American as you're ever going to see. And uh, my um, great, 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 great grandfather, I was told, uh, made a, a point to uh, make sure that his uh, uh, offspring, both white and black, had land. And uh, he, uh, I was told, uh, got into a sort of situation with uh, his relatives and pissed him off. And uh, <laughs> he told him to kiss his white ass. And he wasn't going to diss any of his children. And that gave uh, my family land. So as I grew up, there was a, a situation where my relatives always had land. 
And uh, even though there was that area of sharecropping, and uh, I knew what that was as I got older, uh, both of my grandparents had their own land. And described myself to someone once, I said, I feel that I was a jewel that needed polishing. And getting to uh, the institutions that I went to, Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts and Yale University, they were uh, strong people that I gravitated to uh, that added to that area of polishing. The uh, situation with a, a number of things that are a, a part of uh, works that I finished and, uh, well, uh, as you can sort of see, both of us are involved in certain areas of uh, tack radism. I also uh, collect a lot of uh, hats, uh, hats in general, and uh, sunglasses. It's not, I say, a matter of being cool, because I do look cool in sunglasses. No, I'm also diabetic, so therefore it's the uh, area of protecting my eyes. We human beings, uh, especially Americans, uh, there's a, a desire in certain sort of situations to sell you coolness. How I apply it to what I do in terms of uh, painting, there are certain uh, situations that uh, attract me and um, fortunately then not a whole lot that uh, turned me off. I have a particular approach to certain aspects of the figure that I want to uh, uh, communicate to uh, the spectator that uh, might be recognized for uh, a particular style. Uh, and that would be, uh, even though it's influenced by some of the images of the camera, is that it's like I'm looking at you directly. Uh, the camera is a tool. It's a mechanical sketchbook. Uh, this is one of the pieces that uh, I just recently, uh, I said, finished. This is a, a, a 2004 piece, and uh, it's called the uh, Roaring River Apostle. I uh, photographed him at Roaring River uh, in Jamaica, and uh, he was actually uh, trying to sell me some herb, and uh, at the same time extolling the virtues of Bob Marley and the uh, little community that was around Roaring River. This particular piece is uh, dedicated to uh, my mother and motherhood uh, and Thelonious Monk. He has a, a composition called Ruby, My Dear, and my mother's name is Ruby. So uh, this is Ruby, My Dear. And uh, although it's not my mother, I mean, she certainly <laughs> would not want to say, Certain, well, anyway, she wouldn't even say, no, that, that's not me, but it's dedicated to her. Someone asked me, uh, do I ever paint white people? And this used to happen quite often. So I used to say, you know, I have a number of uh, white friends who are painters, and they're never asked, do they paint black people? I say, I paint people. Now, within the genre of my associates, there's a body of folk that I paint that the majority are considered black folks. But I do paint people that are not necessarily black folks. If you can paint, you can paint people. It doesn't matter the color. So if you can paint people, you can paint people. If you have yourself in a little category, then you got problems. Now, I've been wiping sweat so that it doesn't reflect, but those are the things that are part of what I'm using in terms of defining aspects of the illusion of space. 
when I look at you, you're a little bit more pinker, and I look at him, he's a little bit browner. So that aspect of looking at color is something that I find that if you can paint people, you should be able to paint people. Now, that category in terms of me uh, painting who I like, it comes from a particular cultural influence. It's kind of interesting when I went to Holland to see the uh, exhibition with Rembrandt and Caravaggio, there were no black people in that show. There were no people of color at all. But I respect them for their ability to paint. Now, I didn't learn anything about painting any people of color from Rembrandt or uh, Caravaggio because there were none there. That's why I say within the context of my works, yeah, I think I'm good. And that aspect of ego, yeah, if you can have a Caravaggio there, you can have a Rembrandt there, you can have a Hendrix there. All right, well, let's take us down into the dungeon. Uh, the uh, situation is such where there's uh, stuff all over the place, th things that are ready to uh, be boxed up, discarded, and uh, storage, my bicycle, and as I say, works in progress. And... Uh, the unicycle that I haven't started to uh, learn to uh, work with yet. And uh, this is the uh, storage bin. I uh, had to uh, work in a neighborhood that wasn't a part of my neighborhood and I had to sort of uh, go in and out without getting beat up. And since I was from the uh, Tioga neighborhood in Philly, coming to work in a uh, neighborhood down at uh, Amos Playground where I was, I mean, that was totally a, a warring part of the city. And uh, so my art was a way of uh, being able to uh, make friends, so to speak. My images, uh, weren't all about, you know, the whole political misery of my people. Uh, it was about that aspect of, of my folks that had flash and had style and had beauty that were partying, that were dealing with other aspects of, of their existence and not always reflecting on that. See, I got a, a double stacked uh, easel here. The piece that's on the easel now, there was an attitude as a woman who, uh, she was smoking a cigarette. And there's a whole dialogue about no smoking. And uh, she didn't care, you know. And that aspect of, hey, I'm not here to sort of preach to you, you know, about smoking. And, but I liked the way she looked, so I took a shot of her. There's a pair of shoes that I'm, I just finished painting, which are going to be a part of a, a painting that... Uh, I showed at the uh, New Mu Museum of uh, Contemporary Art that was dedicated to uh, uh, Fela Kuti. Fela was a <clears throat> Nigerian musician that uh, uh, was a thorn in the uh, side of uh, the uh, Nigerian government. Anyway, there was a large frame and uh, kind of an altarpiece. And uh, when I showed it in New York and it didn't show the piece in the full uh, design fashion that I originally made it for. Uh, so what I wanted to do is have uh, about 40 pair of shoes that I had painted and I was gonna put them across the uh, altarpiece and uh, have them down the bottom that would give uh, uh, kind of recognition to the women in his life and his uh, uh, acknowledgement of them as being a major supporter of, uh, of his music. This is a, one of the pieces that uh, I'm working on, actually the painting that I started when I was in Ghana. Seeing people on their own turf and interacting with them uh, from a standpoint of, of not uh, getting second or third hand, uh, I think helps to uh, 
expand your knowledge about folks. Mary was one of the uh, former students at Connecticut College and a model, and uh, incredible eyes. And she uh, set the whole time for this piece. So uh, there's a way I can say I paint jeans that no one else does. I'm not trying to sort of uh, make the paint tell you that it's paint. I want the paint to tell you that, wow, that looks like jeans, that looks like hair, that looks like skin. Because I'm dealing with a kind of a limited sort of situation anyway, so why have the whole thing done that looks like paint? I'm already working with paint, so I want that aspect of paint to uh, trick you into uh, seeing something else. And you go into the museum, sometimes there's a bench in front. Well, make it sit down for a little while and look at it for a while. Is there anything else that we, I should know or? No, I just want to, in a way, I say, just the fact that you're here, that the poignance of you being here, uh, the grandson of a, a man who invested in, in, in buying my art and the fact that you were influenced by it and uh, the situation within the context of America where anything can happen. And for this to happen is something that I'm overjoyed about. And I feel, I say, there's a, a kinship that was made long before I met you. And that's a, a phenomenon within the context of my uh, creative involvement that uh, I relish. I, uh, again, I say, there's a respect that has gone out to you by virtue of what your grandfather did. And it was a spillover that uh, I find is kind of beyond words for me to try to sort of find it. And it I say I'm overjoyed and it's a, a phenomenon that uh, I said, wow, I mean, the dude's grandson is here, you know, filming me who bought one of my pieces. And uh, there's a camera crew here supporting that and uh, these are white dudes, and this is America, and they're hip cats, you know, and I don't mean that sort of situation. I haven't picked up any evil vibes from you, you know, and uh, that aspect of being fascinated by my living space and getting interesting questions, uh, hey, that's hip, you know, and in a way, what can I say, you know? This is a good Saturday, you know? <laughs> what, can I, what can I say, you know? Last question, do you want to be remembered in a certain way? Do you even think about something like that? Oh, sure. I mean, it's when you uh, do like what we just did, you know, we left and went across the Atlantic Ocean to see uh, images uh, by Rembrandt and Caravaggio. And as I said before, my ego is such where, yeah, I would like to sort of have my stuff uh, on the same level as that. Uh, I don't want to sort of deal with the... Uh, <laughs> the misery and the uh, hardships that uh, they ended their lives with. But uh, no, it would be great for uh, that legacy to be in a sort of situation where you can go into a museum and see my stuff. I'll be dead and gone, and that won't mean anything to me at all, but uh, there may be some folks that might appreciate uh, my stuff the same way that I would appreciate uh, some of the, the works that I go to museums to see.